you cannot force God to give you grace. And you can't stop God from giving you grace. God is not some life hack that you can practice in order to get grace or to refuse it from God. That's not how God works. And that's what Jesus is teaching this rich man in today's scripture passage. The rich man comes to Jesus and he asks the ultimate life hack question. For those of you who are saying, what's a life hack? It's simply some, some trick or skill or method that's used to sort of increase productivity or efficiency in life. We're always looking for life hacks to help us overcome life's burdens or struggles so that we can be more effective. And so you got little life hack questions. How do I unplug my drain? How do I pour my milk out? But then you got the million dollar life hack questions that this man asks. How do I inherit eternal life? And if we translate that question, the young man, the, the rich man is asking Jesus, tell me how I can earn eternal life. Tell me how I can earn my inheritance from God. And so Jesus and this rich man, they have a conversation about the law and Jesus teaches a few things. The first one is inheritance ain't earned. If you haven't figured that out yet in your own life, uh, you can't just demand your inheritance. It's, it's not earned. It's, it is a gift. So that was the first lesson. The second lesson that this rich man had to hear is I'm... I'm God's not a vending machine. God's not a life hack. And the, the, poor, the poor man, um, he went away, um, probably thinking, uh, Jesus, you can't use the word ain't in a sentence. Uh, but I don't know what to do with this take on life. I want you to give me some tried and true method. What's the trick that I can use so that I can inherit so I can earn my inheritance. Inheritance is not earned, and there's no life hack that's going to get you that gift. I, I, I know that the, the young man, the rich young man, he walked away, and he wasn't getting what Jesus was teaching. You can't force God's grace by what you do or don't do. I heard a story about a... Um, a man named Jake, and he grew up on his family's ranch, and he was told as a child, one day you'll inherit this. And there was a, a remarriage and a, a stepbrother, uh, Carlos, who came into the family, and Jake and Carlos, they were, like, they were brothers. They were like blood brothers. They were so close. But as the years went by and they, they moved into their adulthood and beyond, um, at some gathering, uh, Jake, he, he sort of said about the farm, the, the ranch, yeah, I, I get to inherit all of this. And it was at that point that uh, parents sort of said, oh, like, it's going to be split, this ranch, 50-50, between you and Carlos. And Jake was devastated. Jake was angry. Jake he railed against his parents and said, you promised me that I would inherit the ranch. And parents are like, e, well, you know, there's two of you now, so it's going to be split 50-50. Split and Jake 
Jake got angry at his brother Carlos, wouldn't speak with him. Uh, and despite all of the, all of the, um, the, tr the arguing, saying, well, Carlos, Carlos has been working the ranch all these years. You know, Jake, you, you went off and you did other things uh, in the city. But Jake had it in his mind that somehow he was owed an inheritance to the point where he'd let it impact his relationship with his family. He, he, he wanted that inheritance so much he thought he'd earned it. If you haven't figured it out yet, you don't earn your inheritance. It's a gift. You cannot tell the person who's gifting you that they are required to give it to you. So that's what the, the rich man you know, had to learn about this inheritance from God. It's not earned. When he heard from Jesus that um, you've, you've got to follow all these commandments, have you done so? And he said, yes, I've done that ever since I was a little kid. I followed every single teaching that there is, which was how he thought that inheritance was earned. Teacher, I've kept all these since my youth. And again, he was confused. And Jesus had to let him know, I need you to look at this differently. The, the first thing that Jesus did is, despite the fact that this young man, this rich man, had not given away everything, Jesus still loved him. God still loves us even when we fail what we think we're supposed to do to earn God's grace. You can't stop God from loving you even when you fail yourself, others, or God. Jesus taught him, you lack one thing give everything you have away, and then you can follow me. An impossible thing for anyone to do. Even the disciples were learning, you can't give everything away. Even though it's impossible, even though none of us can do what's required to earn God's grace, God's salvation, it's still a gift given to us by God. Because you can't stop God from giving you that gift. You can't force God to give you the gift. You can't stop God from giving you the gift of salvation. I have this um, agreement with um, a, a, a clergy colleague who has a couple uh, little cute kids. And the agreement is this, whenever I'm having a frustrating day, whenever I am despairing about life, whenever I'm just down in the dumps, uh, her job is to send me a picture of her kids. You know, cute little kids running around. And it's, it's not surprising, just seeing a baby's face or seeing a little kid walking around being a kid or video of all that cuteness can just pull you out of anything. And so as I'm, you know, whenever I get these pictures, they'll be introduced with, uh, here's a picture of our daughter uh, wearing an outfit that uh, her grandma got her. Uh, here's a picture of her little boy and uh, wearing a, a picture her other grandmother got her. Every single picture is really about the outfit that grandma bought the kid, right? Um, and so grandma was here. There's all kinds of evidence that grandma is here. You, you can't stop grandmas from, here, I want you to try this experiment. Find a grandma, find a grandma with, with a, a little, 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 little grandchild, and you walk up to that grandma and you say, I forbid you from ever buying clothes again for your grandchild. And then just see how that goes. You can't stop a grandma from buying clothes for a grandchild, can you? 
that's not how the universe works. In the same way, you can't stop God from loving you, even if you think you don't deserve it. There, I read somewhere, just a beautiful piece about um, our parents don't love us less because they prefer spending time with our children. It's that when they're spending time with their grandchildren, they're reminded of when we were that age, and this is their second go at just loving us and, and enjoying us. You, you can't stop. You can't stop, Grandma, even if you tried. Uh, you can't stop God from sharing the inheritance that you will never earn. Because God is not some life hack. Following Jesus is not some trick or method that you can use in order to earn God's love. It's out of your hands. You can't force God to give it to you. You can't stop God from giving you that love. And that is what this table is all about. And as we go through the season of Lent, try as we may to be good people, to be ethical, to love and be loved in the right ways. Try as we may, each week we're, we're going to realize that we, we fall short and that we can't ultimately follow Jesus to the cross. But in that, we're going to find our salvation.